Hello and welcome to this video on voltage amplifiers, where we're going to move towards a simple model for representing amplifier circuits. Let's first start by looking at this example of an amplifier circuit. Amplifier circuits come in many different forms, and this is just one fairly simple example. But the purpose of any amplifier circuit is to take a, an input and create an output. And if it's an amplifier, the input might be very small, but the output should be greater. And the increase of input to output is what we call gain in amplifiers. Amplifiers have other parameters as well. They have an input impedance or resistance, and they also have an output impedance. Before we know it, amplifier circuits become very complicated. And so what we need is a simple model to try and represent them. Here's an example of an amplifier that I've modelled using just a few components. Here I have my input voltage and again we're producing an output voltage. But we've simplified by creating this model based on Thevenin's theorem. If you remember that Thevenin's theorem requires one voltage source and one resistance. And so likewise, I'm representing my amplifier as a voltage source. We're producing a voltage from the amplifier. And it also has a resistance connected to the output terminals. I also have an input resistance here, Ri. And so what we have is Ri is the input resistance, Ro is the output resistance. And the idea being whatever voltage is dropped across Ri is produced but in a greater form by the uh, voltage source here. And so the voltage source I've labelled as GVO V1. Basically, whatever V1 is multiplied by GVO. And GVO represents what we call the open circuit gain. So here's a very si a simple model of an amplifier circuit compared to models previous. And this model can be applied to any amplifier circuit. The problem is we've made some assumptions here. The first one is that our amplifier is what we call open circuit. There's nothing connected. And amplifiers rarely are in this state and what we find is what we connect on the end or the terminals on the output, is what we call the load, affects the behaviour of the amplifier. Let's have a look at how we can extend this model to cover these missing parameters that we've ignored so far. Now you can see the same circuit represented by our voltage source, GVOV1, RO, the output resistance, and RI, the input resistance. But we've added some extra components. Whatever's supplying some kind of input signal to our amplifier is represented by ES, the initial voltage source. And we also have RS, the impedance of our source as well. This goes into our amplifier. GVOV1 produces a voltage which is a multiple of V1, so V1 multiplied by GVO. And again, we have our output resistance, but now we have a load resistance attached, which completes the circuit. And so now we have a model which is a little bit more accurate, and we can use to represent amplifiers and how they function. One point to mention is that generally speaking, for any amplifier, the input resistance wants to be as large as possible. This is because we want to draw as little current as possible on the input of the amplifier. The whole point of the amplifier is to provide gain, to turn a very small signal into a very large one. And so we want to draw as little current as possible on the input to help make that happen. And so what we find is that our input tends to be very high, ideally infinite, on the input. It's the opposite for the output resistance, where we want to provide as maximum current flow as possible, flowing from the amplifier, in order to provide maximum gain 
And so here we find that the output resistance tends to be as small as possible, ideally zero. In practice, having infinite input resistance and zero output resistance isn't feasible, but these are ideal values that uh, we tend to represent on these diagrams. If these ideal values were the case, we would find that adding these extra components into our circuit doesn't really affect, affect the behavior of the amplifier. But we'll see that because these values are only ideal and not the case in practice, that we find that the behavior of the amplifier has been affected by these extra components that we've added in. Firstly, hopefully you can see that V1 is not the same as ES, the supply voltage. We've supplied some kind of signal as an input to our amplifier, but that input voltage is not the same as V1. Why is that not the case? Well, just looking at this left-hand segment of the circuit, we can see that we formed a potential divider. ES is going to be split between RS and RI. That voltage is going to be divided. And so only the voltage that's dropped across RI will be V1. The rest will be dropped across the impedance of the source itself, RS. That's why it's important to make RI as large as possible. We want as much of ES to be dropped across RI as possible. So V1 is as big as ES. So our first point to make is that ES does not equal V1. On the same point, on the right hand side, our amplifier takes some kind of voltage dropped across the input resistance and it produces an output voltage, GVOV1. We can also see that GVOV1 doesn't equal V2 the voltage dropped across the load, our final output voltage. Again, we have a simple potential divider arrangement here. So the voltage produced by the amplifier, GVOV1, is split between the output resistance and RL, the load resistance. Again, that's why we want RO to be as small as possible, so that most of this voltage is dropped across RL. But again, we can make the second point, the G V O V one does not equal V two. In reality, we see the following by using the potential divider rule. V one, the voltage that actually reaches the input impedance of our amplifier and is dropped across the amplifier in order to produce an output, is determined by the following formula. Using the potential divider rule, we can see V1 equals ES multiplied by a fraction. And we're concerned about the voltage dropped across RI. So RI goes on the top of our fraction. RS plus RI on the bottom of our fraction. Because the voltage ES has been split between RS and RI. If you're not sure about the potential divider rule as we've applied it here, I suggest going back to our previous video where we go through the potential divider rule in more detail. But likewise, we can apply to the right-hand side and we can say that V2 is equal to GVOV1 multiplied by a fraction. We're concerned about V2, which is measured across RL. So RL goes on the top of our fraction. RO, the output voltage, plus RL on the bottom of the fraction. And so what we find is that the, the gain of our amplifier has been affected by the new components that we've added into our circuit. And the open circuit gain, GVO, is not the actual gain of our amplifier. The actual gain of our amplifier we'll call GV. And GV, in practice, 
is how much bigger the output voltage V2 is than V1. And so we can represent GV as V2 divided by V1. Well, let's look again at the formulas that we have above because we know that V2 is GV over V1 multiplied by RL over RO plus RL. And so V2 divided by V1, let's adjust our uh, formula above, V2 over V1, we're just dividing both sides by V1, and so we lose a V1 term on the right-hand side as well. And so our formula for gain, GV, simply works out as GVO multiplied by RL over R0 plus RL. What we see in this formula is that the open circuit gain that we start with, GVO, is not the same as GV. Because we've added in these extra components, RL, we have affected the open circuit gain and actually have a different value of gain for the loaded circuit. Let's apply the same thing to work out current gain. Before we do that, let's revisit first of all our circuit. We can say first of all, looking at the right hand side of the circuit, that I2 can be calculated using Ohm's law. We know the voltage in our circuit on the right hand side, G V naught V1, and we know that the total resistance of our series circuit here is R naught plus RL. And so what we can do is we can determine our formula for I2 first of all. We can say that I2, the output current, is equal to the voltage GVO V1 over resistance R0, RO rather for output, RO plus RL. Ideally, because we want to find current gain, we would like our formula here to be all in terms of current. And you'll notice here that I have a term for voltage V1 in our circuit. The, the term for gain is just a, a, a number, a multiple, by which V1, the voltage, is going to be multiplied. But V1 is a voltage, and I would rather have that in terms of current. So let's return to our circuit here and find V1, which we see is the input voltage across the input impedance. Again, we can use Ohm's law here because we know voltage is current times resistance. And we have our voltages measured across just the one resistor, the input impedance, and it has a current of I1 going through it. And so returning to our formula here, we can rewrite our formula for I2 in terms purely of current, we can say that I2 is equal to GVO, but rather than V1, we can say that it's multiplied by I1 multiplied by RI, current times resistance. So we've used Ohm's law to make an alteration to our circuit there. The bottom of the fraction hasn't changed, RO plus RL. Now we can go ahead and try and work out the current gain because similarly to our voltage gain being the ratio of the voltages output over input, the current gain is given by the ratio of the currents. How much bigger is the output current compared to the input current? And so similarly we can say the following, that our current gain, I'll call it GI, is equal to I2 over I1. Here we already know the formula for I2 above and I2 over I1 I can simply do what I did before divide both sides by I1 and we find that the I1 term cancels. And so the formula for the gain or the current gain rather becomes the following. GV naught 
or GV all rather, RI over RO plus RL. Again, you can hopefully see that the current gain is affected by the, the loading components in the circuit and not just the amplifier's own impedances on the input and output. The RL also has a role to play in determining the current gain. Finally, we can combine current gain and voltage gain together to get the total power gain. If we've determined current gain and voltage gain, then the gain in power, I'll call GP, is simply equal to the voltage gain multiplied by the current gain. So I hope you found this video useful. First of all, on showing how we can represent, generally speaking, any amplifier as a simpler model. We've used the principles of Thevenin's theorem, the potential divider rule, and Ohm's law to determine that not only can we have open circuit values for our gain, but that these values are affected by adding in additional components into the circuit, and specifically the effect of this load resistor, which is going to change the results of the amplifier and its gain from what is an ideal open circuit gain to a real in-practice gain, which will never quite match up to the open circuit gain that's specified by an amplifier.